Captain Dave Schneider, it's a guide's life. How's everybody doing? Uh, gonna shoot a tutorial for you tonight. Uh, this this first one that I'm gonna do tonight is actually on drop shotting. And I've been talking about doing this and gonna talk about doing this and it's go time. Here we go. Uh, I drop shot all the time. It's probably, it's certainly one of my go-to techniques and, and especially, especially when I get up north. Uh, but I drop shot in South Florida just as much as I drop shot anywhere else. Um, it's something that, uh, it's something I really believe in. It's something that I do all the time. And uh, so I want to get with you here and I want to get, I want to get this rolling. I want to show you how and what I do. So the first thing is uh, let's, let's go through some, some pieces and parts. Let's go through the technical stuff. Um, the, uh, the, the, the things that I actually use for me, drop shotting is there's three components. I always use a swivel. Um, number one, and, and of course, if I'm going to use a swivel, you know, guys, I, I'm, I use this, the same swivels I use all the time. It's a Spro swivel. And, and, uh, so that's number one. The next component of course is going to be, is going to be the drop shot weights themselves and, and drop shot weights. They come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. And I have the, the five that I use are, are right here in the palm of my hand. And, and I'll talk about those in just in just a few moments here. And then you need hooks. And if as, in terms of hooks, as far as hooks are concerned, I've got three styles of hooks that I use. Uh, and uh, two of them are by Trocar and one is by Owner. The uh, the Trocar hooks that I use, and it really it just depends on the bait that I'm throwing, but I'll use the circle style just like this, and that's a very traditional uh, drop shot. And then I use the more J style, and this is actually the one I use for smallmouth most of the time. And boy, I'll tell you, it sticks them right in the upper lip really well and then this is the third hook that I use and this particular one is called a rigging hook and it's made by owner and the rigging hook is what I use if I am going to be rigging um, and I want to be Texas style I want it to be I want my bait to be weedless then, then I'm going to be using the, this this rigging style hook and I'm going to show what they all look like and how I rig them uh, with the different baits here as I go through this process and I'm going to do this as fast as I base as fast as I can um, so first of all when I tie I'm going to take a, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be using, oh, by the way, I use uh, the same kind of deal here when it comes to the, uh, I use fluorocarbon leader 100% of the time when it comes to drop shotting. You should know too, I, I should tell you this, I actually drop shot every day as a guide because I use my same drop shot rig uh, for shiners, exactly the same. Uh, the difference is I don't use a swivel or a leader in that situation because I'm drop shotting right on the 65 pound braid. I tie the hook on put the weight on it and there I go but I'm gonna start I'm gonna get myself a nice chunk of uh, of fluorocarbon leader here if I'm doing this a lot of times I'll go a full full arm's length I'll go wide as wide here just like this and I'll take a full arm's length and and I'll trim that and the first thing you want to do the way I rig these the very first thing you need to do is you need to tie a swivel you have to tie a swivel on here it's it's the first thing you want to do uh, because I use the same knot in all of this I use a polymer knot every time and and uh, and that's kind of the way this thing rolls i'm going to go through one time let me get my, my eyeballs on here i'm going to go through one time just like so get it hanging uh just like so i hope you guys can see this with the with the lack of contrast um floral you know again i'm, I'm telling I'm tying a straight polymer knot pull your loop out drop your swivel through and always going to moisten it Pull it down that's step one you got to tie a swivel now you could tie this to your main line if you wanted to you you absolutely can 100 tie this to your main line um and uh and and start from there now i i you know i'll make these up ahead of time actually um and i'll i'll i'll, I'll keep these ready to go so that uh i'm uh i'm i'm you know off i go i just grab it and, and tie the next one Next step, we'll, we'll, we'll forego tying to the main line, but you would assume you tie this piece to the main line. Now, I've got this nice big long stretch here. I'm going to take my line and take my hook, and let, let's I'll, I'll, I'll use the uh, I'll use the uh, the rigging hook here. And guys, this is incredibly important when you drop shot. You need to make sure now that my main line is up. This is my main line here. I want you to follow this. All right, here's my main line. Is right here. Here's my swivel. 
Okay, I'm sorry guys, there's my swivel. I'm going down to the bottom of the line here. Now down to the bottom of the leader. And this is, this is important. You take your line, you, it's incredibly important that your line pass through the eye of the hook with the hook shank, or with the hook, bending the hook up. It ha that's incredible. You don't want your hook upside down on your drop shot rig. You want your hook right side up. And to do that, you're gonna, you're gonna start by making sure that you go through with the guide up, all right? At that point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie this. Now, the question is, well, how much leader do you leave or, or whatnot? It just depends. I, you know, if I 90% of the time, I'm going to leave about two feet underneath or at least 18 inches or so underneath um, uh, what, you know, underneath the finished product here. So that, you know, so that I know that's, that's how much that's how much line is going to be where my weight's going to be here. All right. It's incredibly important that you understand this that um, the tag end is the, actually the end where you're going to be hooking your, uh, uh, your weight. And so at that point, I'm gonna just tie my, my uh, uh, polymer knot. Again, go through. This, by the way, there's no options here. You have to tie, this is the drop shot knot. You use a polymer knot. You're gonna drop it through here and I'll show you why in just a second. All right, just like this. Again, moisten, cinch it up. Now you take your tag end, which in this case is right here. All right, this is the piece that a lot of times you would cut off, okay? But you're not gonna do that. What you're gonna do is, you're, here's the main line running in this direction up. Okay, I got it in my mouth here, so main line's up. You're gonna take this tag end, and this is, this is really important here, okay? I'm gonna show it up here too. You take the tag end, and you're going back through this way. I want you to see this, guys. You're going back through in this direction. This is going to pull your knot straight up, you're gonna see it, boop, just like that. And now, when your drop shot hangs, it's gonna hang just like that, okay? And that's kind of pretty well how you want it. Now the weight is gonna go down here um, on the table and the, and the tag, the, the, the uh, line, end that we're tying to our main line is up above, okay? And that's how that goes. Now, I'm gonna take my weights. Now let's talk weights here for a minute, all right? First of all, I use one of these three types. This is, a, this is lead, this is a lead straight, this is a, a, a tungsten straight, and this is lead curved. These, I use one of these three almost 95% of the time. Very rarely do I use a round weight that's a round lead there, and there's a round tungsten there, all right? Um, very rarely do I use the rounds anymore because I find that they just hang up in everything. Uh, now, if I wanna make commotion in the sandy bottom or a mucky bottom, I'll use the round one and just let it bang, bang, bang. But if I'm in grass, if I'm in rocks, I'm going to use these because they just don't grab a hold of anything and they allow me to move, move my baits up and down. And so that's, that, these are the weights that I primarily use. Now, as far as types, okay, as far as, far as the, uh, the, the, the curved weights, these are the ones that I use. They're called Voss weights for drop shot. They're not very expensive. These are lead and, uh, and that's how they come. Just, it's a company called Voss. I actually got those, I used to buy those at Dick's all the time. And, uh, that may be, uh, in, you know, but, uh, but you can get them. I'm sure you can get them in a lot of different places. All right, so that's how I use this one. Um, and then the, this is just a standard lead. This one, this particular one uh, came uh, uh, from Bass Pro Shop. And then this, this one here is a, is a, v, a VMC tungsten. And uh, it looks just like this, VMC tungsten. As you can see, these are 3 16 and that's the size of the one I have in my hand here. Um, and, and so on. Now, I'm gonna say, I will say this now. As far as the size of the weights are concerned, you want to go as light as you can, but it has to be heavy enough to get on the bottom, and it, and you have to be able to jiggle your bait a little bit without moving the weight, and and so go as heavy as you need to to do that. If if, if, if I'm fishing deeper, I'm going to go heavier. If I'm fishing more shallow, I might go lighter, um, and, and it, but it depends. There's other situations now where I maybe. I've got some things, and I'll talk about them later, actually, maybe in another, in another deal. Um, but I've got some situations where I want it to fall really slowly, even in current. And so I, I, a lot of times I will uh, um, go with a lighter weight in that kind of a situation. But at the end of the day, you take any one of these. Here's our drop shot rig here. Here's the tag end down here. And I'm going to back out just so you can see this just a little bit here. And I'm going to take this, and you're just going to just thread it through. Thread it through the weight. The, these, ha these have a, uh, in fact, let go, let's go tight again. These actually have a friction um, deal on them where the idea is you punch through it, 
and I'm trying to do this without my glasses on here, and I got it, yay, all right. You punch through and you just pull, and then that, that'll hang like that. Now, I, I don't fish it that way, a lot of people do. Uh, that's how they're designed. I always put an overhand knot in it, just like this, because I, frankly, I don't want to lose my weight. <laughs> and, and that is, guys, that is a drop shot rig right there. That's the standard drop shot rig. Now this one, I don't think, I don't know if you can see it from that distance or not, but, uh, but this is the, uh, and this particular one has a very long, this has got about an 18 inch drop on it. I never, guys, I'm telling you straight up, I never fish less than probably eight or 10 inches on a drop shot. Some people do. I, I'm just, I'm just not one of them. I, I don't do it. Um, and you can see here, I've got plenty of leader. I've got plenty, you know, this is my fluorocarbon leader. That's my drop shot, guys. That's how we do it. Plain and simple, period, the end. Now I'm gonna show you how, uh, I'm gonna show you how I rig the weight or the baits, okay? Let's say on this one right here, and I do this in Okeechobee all the time. Let's say I wanna go Texas style. That's what this rig is for. I'm gonna take this little tiny, I've got a very tiny um, three inch uh, Senko here. This isn't a Senko, it's actually uh, made by Bass Pro Shops, whatever they call stickos or whatever. I'm just gonna go through it just like that, okay? I'm going to come back around. I'm going to hook it up in here. And this is when I want my drop shot um, to be weedless. That, that's what I'm looking for here. Okay. So I'm going to pop it through here and just like this. And I'll skin hook it just like that. Text posed. And that's the way it looks on the hook. Just like that. That's how it looks. And that's how I will fish this oftentimes. If, and I'll do, this, I'll do this in northern lakes too if I want my bait to be weedless. If, if it needs to be weedless, if I'm catching in the grass too much or whatever, um, I'll do it. I won't hesitate to do it. In fact, I do it with gulp baits all the time uh, up here in Michigan, um, which is where I'm at shooting this right now. Now, that's one rig. I'm going to show you how I hook it on, on, a, on, a, on a hook like this style, okay? Uh, this particular bait is called a robo worm, and this is, uh, I, I use, if I'm using a worm, a lot of times it's actually a robo worm. They're very soft. They're very supple. They're hand poured. Um, these are really, really really good baits. I'll take, I'll take the hook just like so. All right, let me get it in focus for you here. I'll take it just like so, and I'm just gonna hook it right in the face, just like that. Sometimes I, the bait doesn't stick out at all, and that's, uh, that's, that's how I rig it, J just like this. And you know, like I said, it's on the line, and, and it, it's, gonna, it's gonna sit like this. I'm gonna shake it, the whole thing is gonna wiggle, just like so, and I will do the same style of rigging, and I'm gonna show you the other, the other baits. Now, I've, I've shown you the Senko, that I use, I've shown you the Robo Worm, and now I'm gonna show you the big secret, all right? This is what I call Captain Dave's dirty secret, all right? This is a disgusting jar, and I'm gonna move all this stuff aside here, of gulp baits. Now, I've got it in a, in a container here with, with gulp liquid, and you can see there's a huge variety of baits inside here that I use, all right? What I have found is when you buy gulp baits, they look like this. They're beautiful. Isn't that wonderful? And so on and so forth. But when you buy these things and you keep them for, oh, I don't know, just a, uh, let's say you keep them for three, four, even, even, even two or three months even kind of thing, um, they turn into a dried up, can't use them at all, hard mess. And, and I, I'm, I'm not indicting gulp or anything like that, but I'm telling you, here's a good example too. You cannot use these baits once they're hard like that, all right? What I have learned to do is I'll cut them open and I'll pour them right into this jar. I'll pour them right in there, just like that. And, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's an incredibly stinky thing. <laughs> but I'll take a bait and let's, I'm gonna pull one out of here. I've got one here right here, just like this. This is just a leech. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna hook it right through just like this on this style. And I'm gonna throw it out there just like that, and and this is this is the kind this is how I caught that seven pounder here the other day. Um, that seven pound smallmouth came on a drop shot uh, with uh, a little a little bit little tiny bait like that. All right, and this stuff is so stinky I can't even begin to describe to you how disgusting it is. Guys, I hope this tutorial has helped you. I hope that uh, you know that's how I fish my drop shot 90% of the time. Uh, a lot of times I'll use uh, fluorocarbon, or I'm sorry, I'll go swivel, hook, weight. I like to keep my bait high off the bottom, so I usually that's why I keep that 18 inches or so. I like to keep my weight up or my bait up. I, I just did something in my own head, um, and uh, I'll even tie that swivel. I'll tie a lot of times my main line. A lot of times it's braid. 
I, I do that on Okeechobee. I do it here in Michigan. You hear those spinning reels when I step the hook, it goes, you know, that kind of thing. That's, that's because I'm using braid almost all the time. So, uh, so don't be afraid to use it, guys. Captain Dave Schneider, it's a guide's life. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I'll see you tomorrow.